Hello folks, today I'm going to share with you my thoughts on the Wi-Fi 7 travel router from TP-Link. This device provides a lot of features like speed due to the dual band nature of Wi-Fi 7, a 2.5 gigabits per second WAN port, and all in the size of a travel router. And the disclaimer before I get to the review is that we got the product from the company for evaluation. We are not getting paid for this review. The company is not influencing the review and all of the opinions expressed in this video are our own. Now, what exactly is a travel router and why do I need one? Well, a travel router is a small device that you can take with you to use anywhere where there is public Wi-Fi and where you want to make sure that all of your devices and your family's devices can easily and securely connect to the internet. You can use it at the airport, on the plane, at the hotel, on a cruise ship, or even at the local coffee shop if they provide free Wi-Fi. So how does the travel router make it easier to connect to the internet? Let's say for example, you have three devices you want to connect to your hotel. Without a travel router, you will have to connect each of them to the hotel network, then register each of the devices via the hotel splash page before you can connect to the internet. With a travel router, you only need to connect the travel router to the hotel network and have it register via the splash page. Then any other device that wants internet access just needs to log on to the travel router's Wi-Fi network. And if you have connected to the travel router before, the connection should be automatic and you don't need to do anything else. Much easier. So how does a travel router make it safer for my devices to connect to the internet? The problem with public Wi-Fi network is that anyone can sign on and snoop at the traffic that other devices are sending and receiving. Any unencrypted traffic can be easily intercepted and seen by a hacker. By using a travel router which provides a virtual private network or VPN, your traffic stays private. Let's open the box and see what we got here. So we have the travel router, some paperwork like the default SSID and passwords and PIN. Under here, we have an ethernet cable, more paperwork like the quick installation guide, troubleshooting guide, technical support guide, etc. Then we have the power plugs for the US, UK, and Europe and then a USB-C cable. And if you're not a moron like me, then the power plug adapter head should snap on pretty easy. The unit itself has a USB 3.0 port for file sharing and USB internet or tethering. It's got a two and a half gigabit per second WAN port and a one gigabit per second LAN port. And a USB-C five volt power port all on the back side. The two Ethernet ports can be software configured such that either one could be the WAN port or they could both be LAN ports. On the front side, there is a status light. On the bottom is the name of the SSID and the pins, etc. On the side are two antennas that you can flip up. On this left side, there is a button for connecting using WPS and resetting the device. There is also an action button that you can program to turn off and on the Wi-Fi or the LED or VPN merge feature. The size of the router is about four and a half inches wide, three and a quarter inches in depth, and then one and a half inches in height. It weighs a little more than half a pound or about 250 grams. The antennas stick up about three and three quarters inches. By comparison to the old AC750 that I had, this unit is quite a bit bigger in size, but not quite twice the size. The height is about the same. When compared to a standard deck of cards, it is slightly bigger and thicker. So technically still portable, but I would not call it pocket size unless you have a pretty big pocket. As far as features, this router supports seven different modes. When you are traveling away from home, you can use it as a router where you can share one wired internet connection with all of your other devices. You can use it as a hotspot by turning a public Wi-Fi into your own secure Wi-Fi. 
If you have a phone, you can tether it to this device and use it for internet access. And if you have a 4G or 5G modem, you can connect it to this device for internet access. When you are at home, you can turn this device into an access point where you turn your wired internet into a Wi-Fi signal. You can use this device as a range extender, boosting the Wi-Fi range. And lastly, you can use it in the client mode where you connect your wired devices to your Wi-Fi network. TP-Link claims that this router supports up to 90 devices. I don't have 90 devices to connect, so I didn't fully test this out, but I did have three devices connected and all streaming movies from different sources. I had Netflix, Hulu, and YouTube all running, and they all worked fine on all three devices. I like having a USB-C port for power, which is great, as I can now use a portable power bank to power this router. In my use case of a cruise ship, I can now carry the router with me as I walk around the ship and not worry about having to plug in the router. The company also says that the router works with over 35 VPN services, including OpenVPN, WireGuard, L2TP, PPTP, etc. I was able to connect it to my OpenVPN server, and the speeds were actually pretty decent, so the processor for this router is doing quite a good job. All right, let's connect this guy up to see how to use it in the modes that I'm gonna use it in. Pretty much just connect it to power, and then I'm gonna pull the antennas up. The unit starts with a blinking yellow light, and I have to wait for the solid red light. You can manage your network remotely using the Tether app, or you can use a web browser, which is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and wait for the solid red light. Now uh, this does take a minute or two when you first start it up. And then I'm going to look for the network named on the sheet, which in my case is TP-Link DBFE and TP-Link DBFE 5G. I'm going to enter the password from the sticker or the one on the bottom of the device. I'm going to verify that the network has joined by looking at the Wi-Fi status. And then I'm going to launch a browser and enter http colon slash slash 192.196.0.1. And the first thing it's going to force me to do is to enter a new password for the device, which is great. So I'm going to make my own password. And then, of course, you have to do it twice just to make sure you did the same thing consistently and then confirm. So step one, I'm going to enter the time zone. For me, it's going to be the Eastern US. Step two, I need to select where the device is getting the network from, right? So either I'm going to do USB tethering from my phone, I'm going to do Wi-Fi off a public Wi-Fi, Ethernet off a hard cable, or if I provide my own USB modem. More than likely, your use scenario will be at a public location with Wi-Fi, like a hotel or a cruise ship. So let's go ahead and choose Wi-Fi. And then it's going to ask you what Wi-Fi network the router will connect to. So I'm going to select the Wi-Fi from my hotel in this instance, and then enter the password for the hotel network. Next, it is going to ask me to select a connection type, either static or dynamic. I'm going to go ahead and use dynamic as that's probably the more common scenario. And then step five, uh, it asked me to set the MAC address for the router. I'm going to go ahead and use the default MAC as there is no reason for me to change it at this point. Uh, some folks have talked about changing this to the one that's on their phone because they want to clone the MAC on their phone because the phone is the one that originally logged into the uh, hotel or cruise ship, which only allows for one uh, unique MAC address. Step six, it's going to ask us to personalize our wireless settings. So I'm going to go ahead and set the SSID so that the router will broadcast uh, my own ID of Blue Monkey Net. And I'm going to enter the passwords, the same password for both networks. You can choose to set each band separately, but I don't need to do that. So I will leave the box unchecked. You can see that the 5 GHz selection is grayed out as it will use the same info as the 2.4 GHz since we are leaving the box unchecked. 
After this, you need to reconnect to the new SSID that you just created because the router is going to reboot. And in this example, it will be named Blue Monkey Net. And it will ask for the router password again. So here I'm going to go ahead and skip the TP-Link cloud service. And I'm also going to skip the authorization for TP-Link to identify the clients of my network. I'm going to have to explore these in a separate video. And so here we are at the main control screen of the travel router. And it's all ready to go. Let's see how fast this router is. First, I will use my phone to connect to my Wi-Fi directly. And then using speedtest.org, I get about 756 megabits per second. And then using fast.com, I get about 790 megabits per second. So it's in the high 700s. Then I'm going to use my phone to join the Blue Monkey Net 5G network. And then uh, using speedtest.org, it looks like it's about 360 megabits a second. And then using fast.com, I get about 410 megabits a second. So it is a bit slower, um, you know, maybe about half the speed just going through the router. So just be aware of that. But still at the high 300s and low 400 megabits a second, it's still pretty, pretty fast. And if I want even a faster mode, I can utilize the multi-link operation or MLO feature, which basically combines both the 2.4 gig and 5 gig channels and gets you increased speed. The trick is that this is a new network, so you need to connect to something different than the 2.4 or 5 gig network. To set this up, go to your router setup page, click on the network map icon on the top menu, and then under the wireless section, you will see your 2.4 gig and 5 gig band and the respective channels that they're using. Then you should also see the MLO network band where you should see both bands listed. Note that I've already changed your SSID for the 2.4 and 5 gig bands. You may also need to change the MLO network name to something you recognize, like Blue Monkey Net underscore MLO. This network can have a different password than the other two networks. If you don't see the MLO network, you can click on the edit here or else click on advance, wireless, and then wireless settings. Here you can see the second section here where the MLO network can be enabled or disabled. Note that you only have two choices for a security protocol between enhanced open which means no password needed to connect. And then the WPA3 personal, which your connecting devices need to support. Now I will join the MLO network named Blue Monkey Net underscore MLO. Once again, gotta type in the password. I'm gonna do both speedtest.org and fast.com again. And looks like it is getting something a little bit faster than when I just did the 5G, right? So these are hitting about 400 megabits a second. Now the common name for this device is BE3600, but the actual model number is TL-WR3602BE. There are actually quite a number of manufacturers out there that have modems with the name BE3600, which also include home routers. If you Google for BE3600, you will see travel routers pop up from TP-Link, GL.inet, as well as some home routers from TP-Link and ASUS. So to clarify, the BE and BE3600 stands for Broadcast Enhanced to denote that the product was designed to support advanced broadband technologies. You will commonly see Wi-Fi 7 also referenced as the IEEE standard known as 802.11BE. And 3600 refers to the speed at which the device can theoretically go up to, which is 3600 megabits per second. Wi-Fi 7 includes a feature called multi-link mode where it uses both bands of 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz together. From the 5 gigahertz, one can get about 2882 megabits per second of transfer speed. And from the 2.8 gigahertz band, one can get about 688 megabits per second. Adding those together, the router can achieve 3570 megabits per second or 
For marketing purposes, they round up to 3600 megabits per second. Compare this to my current travel router, the AC750, which has the model name of WR902AC. It also runs in dual band mode, but it only operates at the Wi-Fi 5 standard, which only gets speeds of up to 750 megabits per second. And again, this AC over here refers to Wi-Fi 5. If you need a fast, flexible, and portable Wi-Fi solution for travel or temporary setups, the TP-Link BE3600 Wi-Fi 7 travel router is worth a serious look. Its portability and security features can help you get online anywhere. The one thing I found missing was that there was no 6 GHz or even higher speed. It's in the spec for Wi-Fi 7 standard, but not implemented on this device. Otherwise, I really like the USB-C port for power, and I really like how easy it was to set up and use. From the router configuration page, there are clearly a lot more features that I will explore in future videos if you guys want to leave a comment below. For another video on hardware devices, watch this video here. For more tech videos, make sure you click on the blue monkey to subscribe. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.